All right, so uh, I added the, the connecting rods and the piston pins or the wrist pins and all that stuff. I don't remember what I showed before. I had trouble getting these off because they were extremely tight and also the uh, rod caps weren't loose either and they're held in very tightly by these dowel pins. So what I did, I mean, it was super sketchy, but I wrapped it in like a bunch of shop towels and stuff and I kind of like wedged it right here so that way I could twist against the rod cap bolts and that way it held the rod from spinning. And I already attached the piston heads at that point, but I also put the little sir clips in there and the piston pins, obviously. So that's how the rod is connected to the piston. Uh, those things are a real pain to use or to do. So the, um, the manual tells you to wrap a screwdriver in protective tape, it says. I honestly had a better time just shoving them in with my thumbs. My thumbs still really hurt from that because they're pretty small and pretty sharp. They didn't stab my thumbs, but it's just such a small piece against a lot of force. So after that, I'm doing the rings. So I have my different rings here. This is my bottom ring, and then this is my top ring in terms of my uh, compression ring and uh, all that stuff. And then here's my two oil rings and then my expander. So on here, it shows you a reference. So it says top compression ring gap, and then it says top of engine. So the top of the engine is going to be this little uh, diamond shaped thing. So that's where your injectors will go. So the top of the engine, so you can see it would be like that. So this is the top of the engine, and this goes facing this way, and then you can see the connecting rod. I believe it goes this way, assuming that the manual that I read and I read it correctly, you can see it shows, it shows this little cutout thing for the injectors and then it shows the direction of it. So you can see, uh, like it's kind of, it's kind of weird, but you can see how I have it. So there's the top of it there and then there's the rod in line with it. So that looks correct. And these piston heads, they don't have uh, direction. Meanwhile, the OE piston uh, heads, they have their own specific side for each bank. So bank one will have this dot on the right side and bank two will have this dot on the left side, which means that the piston head, I believe, is off center. So it's not completely squared like these ones are. So in the manual here too, though, uh, for the, this is for the manly rod or the manly piston heads. I don't know if it says which ones I have. Um, yeah, uh, I believe it says on here. Uh, there we go. Extreme Duty Series 86.25 with rings, upgrade pin, blah, 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 and all that stuff. So just, just in case you're looking, if you so happen to have these same piston heads and rods and all that shit. Um, so here's the top of the engine, which I said is this little diamondy thing. So you're going to be facing your piston head like this. So top of the engine, top of the engine or top of engine block. So your second compression ring, which is your one with the Napier cut. So you can see there's like a little groove in there. You really have to look at it from the side. It's hard to see like that, but you can see there's a little shelf on the bottom side. I believe this one also has a dot on the top. Not all of them have a dot. You have to really look at them closely. So this one will go on the bottom, I believe, in terms of the top two rings. I don't know why there's three gaps. That kind of alarmed me a little bit. But this one doesn't sink all the way in, but these two do. So this right here is your second ring gap. Here, I'll use this feeler gauge to give an idea of what I'm pointing at. Ah, I can't get it. I can't get it out. All right, so here we go. So right here, right there is your uh, second ring, and right here is your top ring. So they labeled them as top and second, so that way you can't mess it up. So you can see top compression ring, second compression ring. So this is this is second, that would be your Napier cut one. And then this is your top one, which is your rounded edge one. So you can see uh, top groove bevel up. So yeah, this one, it's very, very hard to see, but I don't even know if I could get a good angle of it. Um, it's easier to see on the side that you didn't cut, assuming you didn't cut both sides. I would not recommend cutting both sides. So one of these sides has a, a, a curved edge and one of them has a solid edge. 
So, I mean, you can see right here, it has a corner and then that one, the corner's gone. So it'll be like kind of rounded. So that would face upwards and go in there. Yeah, you can kind of see it right there. It's, it's really, really hard to see. And then next is going to be your expander ring. And then your, um, I don't even know what they call these, the engine rail, uh, their uh, oil rail rings or whatever. The ones with the little tabs on them. And there's two of them. There's a top and there's a bottom. So on here specifically, though, it has specific instructions for a opposed engine. So if you read right here, it says Subaru EJ25 FA20 ring set containing oil, ra oil rails with tab. When installed in a horizontally opposed engine, rail gaps should be installed as shown to the right. So you can see right here, there's a little tab on the side of the piston head on uh, one side, and then there's a little tab on the other side of the uh, piston head on the other side. And these are at the wrist pin too. They're a little bit offset to the wrist pin. I believe it's like 20 degrees or something like that. So you'll see this tab here. So my implication to that is that this little clip tab thing goes in there and then your expander will go in there. So the order that you'll put these on is I'm doing, I'm doing the expander first and then I'm putting the bottom ring on so the bottom ring, right? And then after that, I'm doing the top, the top ring. So the top ring will go flipped and then you can see the little tab and it'll go on the opposite side of the piston. There's a little groove too on the, the right side, there we go. And then uh, after that, I do the second ring, which is a Napier cut one. So that's the one that has the little shelf overhanging it. So you can see right there, the little shelf thing. And then after that, I do the, um, the top compression ring. And the way that I'm putting these on is the smaller rings. So these ones I'm doing by hand. So I put this one on, this is very easy to put on and you really can't break it. Like you really have to mess with it a lot to break it. And I haven't experienced that yet, fortunately. <laughs> and then I will put the tab in the groove and then I'll walk this one around it. So walking it around it is where you take one end, you put it in there and then you stretch it around it and go around the whole thing until it eventually sits down. The only trick with that is that uh, this will get in your way and there's little tiny shelves on there and those shelves are as far back as the rings should sit. So the rings should not go past those little shelf things. As you can see, there's like those little bumps. So they shouldn't go past that. That's as far as those rings should sit. So when you're done, um, you can see it's not fully flush with the, the expander ring isn't fully flush with the um, tapped rings. And uh, when you're done, you should also check to see that they all move. So I give it a give it a movement test. It's hard to do with one hand. So you should be able to move all your rings. They should move pretty freely. Uh, mine were pretty stuck, these ones, the top ones. But eventually after playing with them a little bit, they kind of loosened up because they were getting stuck in the groove where they were shaved. So I did all those ones and I tested them out. I'm gonna look over them again and then next is going to be smacking them into the cylinder. So when you're done putting the uh, oil rings and stuff on an expander, so you just want to verify that that is in the hole. So you can see a little tab there. And then on the other side, that one is as well. And then your top, your gap for your expander should be, I believe right around that hole. So you can see there's doubled up. They, they gotta be butt to butt instead of one overlapping the other. Otherwise, if you have one overlapping the other, it's gonna have issues. So you can see this is where I chose. So right around here, and it's uh, right around this bottom corner of this little cutout right here. It's about where my uh, gap is. So yeah, and also I would recommend getting a pair of these. These make it so easy. You just uh, put it on there and then you stretch it out like barely enough to go around the whole piston head like you don't have to stretch the shit out of them otherwise you might snap them in half and uh you just set it down set the back in and then you can kind of guide it and then uh, you get them on it's pretty easy all right so uh the next thing that i did was i put the pistons in so what i did is i got my uh little tool here 
So I got the, the piston ring compressor tool. So I had to use a smaller one because the piston rings are like too big for the big one, or the, the tool is too big for the big ones or for the pistons that I had. And I had to use a smaller one. So I had to put it around the piston and then put the tool around it. And it was super fucking sketchy. Then after that, what I did was, uh, the best way that I found to get it in there is this has an orientation. There's a bottom side and the top side. But once I got the thing clamped, you can see in the gap right here of the tool itself that there's, um, you can see where the rings are and see how they are positioned. And then I put it on here, you know, obviously I had the tool holding it together. And then what I did is I checked underneath both sides and everything. And when you clamp it, you want to make sure that the piston is square on it instead of like being sideways on one side like that or like that. You want to make it completely square if you can. And then I grabbed the big mallet and I tapped it evenly like that. And then I checked around all the sides and then saw that it was completely flat. Then I used the back of the mallet, tapped it in, looked at the gap and saw the rings. And then I just periodically check around, tap. And if it came up, I'd tap it again. And then I'd tap it and just go back and forth till eventually they sunk in. The bearings love to fall out when you're uh, when you're putting it in and they kind of just spilled everywhere. And then I had to go through the fun of getting the bearings out of here. I have no idea what the torque specs of these things are because uh, Manly didn't really do a great job of providing that. And these are the ARP 2000 bolts. And uh, the best we could do for now is we did 15 foot pounds for each one. And then we did 50 foot pounds for each one. And then we did 65 foot pounds of each one because it says you're supposed to do 75% of the max torque to yield specs. And then that's what 65 foot pounds is. But yeah, next is the next step in the sketchy process of putting an engine together.